Hi, this is Amy and Jack, and this is video number two of our Plant PAX Library video series. Just a note before we begin, we're assuming you're familiar with Studio 5000 Logic's Designer PLC Programming and Factory Talk View Studio for the HMI. In this video, we're going to show you how to deploy one of the Plant PAX Library objects, specifically the motor object. For the purposes of this demo, we're going to be using version 24 of Studio 5000 Logics Designer and Factory Talk View Studio version 10. If your design environment looks slightly different, that's likely because you're using a different version of the software. For the purposes of this demonstration, we've pre-configured Studio 5000 with a few things. We have a periodic task set at 10 milliseconds, a program we've labeled Program 1, and a function block routine we've labeled P-Motor Routine. To start using the P-Motor block in our program, first we need to import the add-on instruction. We're going to right-click on add-on instructions, import add-on instructions, and then navigate to the folder where the information is stored. In this case, it's stored under Process Library 3.509, Files, Process Objects Library, Process Add-on Instructions. We're going to scroll down to the P-Motor block and open it into our program. Once you've clicked to import the add-on instruction, you can see in this window that the instruction and all its dependencies are being unpacked. After initiating the import, an import filter window will, will pop up for us. That allows us to control some of the import parameters uh, that may be required. We can quickly browse and have a look at this import filter window. In our case, we don't need to change anything. We simply accept all the defaults and import the add-on instruction. As the import happens, you can see in the left-hand project tree the various elements that are being imported. Of key note is it's not just the instruction itself that gets imported, but all its dependencies. In this case, the motor block is actually embedded with additional add-on instructions and uh, they are imported as well in a single operation. Now that we've got the P-Motor add-on instruction into our program, it's time to actually start using the block. So we open the P-Motor routine and we go to look for the P-Motor instruction. By expanding that toolbar, we can see the add-on tab contains all of the same add-on instructions that were imported into the program. The P-Alarm, P-Mode, and P-Motor blocks can all be found here. To add the P-Motor block into our program, we only need to click it. When adding a Plant PAX block to your program, a tag name is automatically generated. If you'd like to change this tag name, you click on the ellipsis, and navigate to the Tag tab in the Properties window. We're going to rename this P-Motor instruction Pump underscore 1. After renaming, this instruction is actually ready to go the way it is. However, typically we need to add input and output parameters to this block in a real program. To do that, we just navigate to the Parameters tag. We'll expose the elements that we need to connect to. So we do that by doing a sort and we simply scroll down to identify the connection points that we need. The Plant PX library supports various modes including operator mode and program mode so we'll expose the operator start stop and the program start stop commands. P commands will allow a program, in other words automatic mode, to be able to start and stop the motor versus an operator mode where the operator manually start and stop the motor. After clicking OK, you'll see the selected elements exposed. We can check to ensure that the tag was created properly. So if we navigate to the parameters and local tags, we'll see pump 1 exists with the data type P motor. Underneath, we can see all the parameters related to the pump 1 block. It's important to note that this was created in the P-Motor routine and is only accessible from the P-Motor routine. It's not found in the controller tags. Just an example of how to use this block in the program, we can bring in some input and output references. 
I'm going to bring an input reference and call it start and link that to p command start and an output reference linked to output underscore run and I'm going to call it running to indicate that my motor or my pump is running. As with any tags that you're using in your program, these tags must be created. So we can right click and make a new tag. I'm going to change this data type to a boolean and connect it to the output underscore run. And for the start, I'm going to connect it first and right click and change it to a boolean. Okay, that completes deploying an instance of this function. Now all we have to do is uh, we have to verify, save the program, and then download it into the controller. Now that we've got this motor instruction running in the PLC, it's time to work on our HMI. So we're going to flip over to Factory Talk View Studio version 10. The first step in your HMI application is to import the standard Plant PAX library images into the file. So you're going to right click on images and add component into application. Navigate to Process Library version 3.509 or whichever version you're working with. Files, Process Objects Library, Graphics, and Images. The default file type the application is looking for is bitmap images. The files are actually saved in the images folder as .png. You're going to need to navigate to the filter and change it from bitmap images to PNG images. Select one of the images and then press Ctrl A on your keyboard to select all and then open. Okay, we're adding our image components into our application. This actually takes a bit of time. The good thing is that uh, these images are actually being used by the entire Plant PX library. Once we have this step done, the rest of the library will use the same images. So normally we can skip this step when we use other library components. After we've added the images into our application, we need to add global objects displays, and macros into our application. This process can take quite a bit of time, so using Movie Magic, we're going to go ahead and speed it up for you. To ensure I'm bringing in all the proper graphics and global objects for the P-Motor instruction, I'm going to open up the documentation for that block. I'm going to go to the table of contents and navigate to the required files for visualization. Just a note, there is a specific order that these dependencies have to be added into the HMI application and this is noted within the documentation. Images, global objects, standard displays, H any HMI tags, and macros. Right now, we're currently adding in all of the images in brackets PNG you see listed there for our Factory Talk View SE application. When this step is completed, we're going to bring in all of the items listed in Table 3 under Visualization Files, GGFX for my application. The standard displays .gfx for the motor instruction can be found below. And with these, it's important to note the first half are required, and then you run into optional displays, which you don't have to import if you don't need them. Now in View Studio, we can import our global objects as the next step. Add component into application after right clicking. You'll browse to where your library is located into the graphics folder and global objects area. And there you will find the required files that you'll need for the motor object as listed in the manual. Just hold down your control key on your keyboard and you can select the required files that we need for this particular object.
All right, the global objects have been added to the application. Now we need to import the displays. Once again, which displays we need are listed in the manual. So you can see there's about eight files, I think, required for this particular objects. So to do that, we just uh, right-click Add Component into Application again, and we go through and we select the appropriate displays that we need. Just make sure that you navigate to the correct subdirectory in your PlantPX library. You got to navigate away from the global objects directory and navigate to the display directory. The final step is to add the macros needed for the Plant PAX library into your application. So right click on Macros, Add Component to Application, navigate to the Macro folder and select nav to objectsmcr This macro is what controls launching the faceplates from the objects in the Plant PAX library. If you'd like to verify that you've added all the components into your application correctly, simply click on the plus sign next to the folders. So here you can see our global objects have all been added into the project, the wide variety of images required for the Plant PAX library are all included now, and finally the displays and faceplates to be used in our project. It's important to note that everything under the Displays folder is what counts towards displays in your Factory Talk View ME or SE program. Okay, we're all set to deploy an instance of this object. We're going to do that by creating a brand new screen, and then we're going to navigate to the Global Objects folder, and we're going to go to the PMotor Objects library there. We'll open up that Global Objects file, and you'll see a listing of the various choices that we have. They all operate the same, so pick the graphics that's appropriate for your application. Simply drag and drop one of them onto your blank screen. If you forget how to do this, you can follow the instructions that are shown at the top of the screen. Now we can close the global objects display. We don't need to save that. Now that we've got the pump on the screen, we need to connect this to the pump tag that we created in our PLC. We're going to right click on the pump graphic and navigate down to Global Object Parameter Values. In this window, we'll connect the graphic to the tag in the PLC and also control how the faceplate behaves. By clicking on the ellipsis, we can navigate to our controller, the online tags, the program, and finally down to Pump1, which is the tag we created in our PLC project. All of the parameters here, which were created when we imported the P-Motor block into our PLC program, are accessible through the Plant PAX faceplate for this motor object. The second field here, label as 2, is where we enter the correct path so that the face scape can find the location of the tag in the controller. This is a locally scoped tag, so therefore we will show the locally scoped path in the path parameter here. The last field we need to fill in is field 5. That's where we get to select whether we use a simple or complex faceplate that pops up when we click on the object. In this case, we're going to select zero, which gives us the option to show the more complex faceplate. So that's it. We added our pump global object into our graphic. I'm going to save this now and then run it in our Factory Talk SE client. I'm going to switch on over to our SE client that's running in the background. So you can see here we've got our display, and our display is running. And clicking on my pump graphic, I launched the P-Motor faceplate. Along the top, we have various tabs for our faceplate, and the tabs are arranged according to role. The tab we're looking at here is our maintenance role faceplate, where maintenance functions can happen. We have an engineering tab where various uh, options can be selected for our faceplate and the function of the motor. There's also a diagnostics faceplate that the operator used to figure out if something's wrong. And also, there's an alarm tab that allows us to view any alarms associated with this motor. Common to all faceplates is a help tab that allows the operator to identify what the various symbols mean inside the faceplate. 
We navigate back to the home screen. This is what the operator would normally use to start and stop the motor. We can click start and you'll see that the motor is started and now running. With the motor running, the operator can manually click stop and you'll see the motor stopping. And that's how easy it is to get a graphic up and running using the Plant PAX library. What we just showed you was getting the pump graphic up and running from an absolute blank project. Now we'd like to show you what that same object looks like using the Plant PAX templates. This is that same pump graphic now running with the Plant PAX templates. You can see the header bar across the top of the screen with screen navigation as well as an alarm banner at the bottom. In the lower right hand corner you can see there's buttons automatically created for user login. And you can see clicking on the pump pulls up the same faceplates as in the other Plant PAX project. Okay, that's it. Join us for our next video where we talk about interlocks and permissives.